Hi there guys and welcome to another A-Level Biology video, Mr Phillips and today we're going to be looking at population genetics um, and it involves these two rather handsome young men, uh, Hardy and Weinberg who came up with the Hardy-Weinberg principle and it allows us to calculate the frequency of alleles within a population. So just to introduce to you then, uh, we need to know there's three key bits of terminology for this module effectively. So the first term is a species, and a species is a group of similar organisms that can reproduce to produce fertile offspring. Population is a group of organisms in the same species living in the same area at a particular time. And a gene pool is the complete range of alleles present in the population. Uh, it's often called the allele frequency, and it can be represented as, as percentages or as decimals. And that's what we're really looking at today um, if we're maybe using some of the information about population to look at gene pools. So just better make sure we're happy with our understanding of that. So a population uh, may have many more alleles of a gene um, than one individual. So we talk about this gene pool and it's got the genetic diversity in there. It can be altered by things like migration or mutations, so it's called genetic drift, which we'll cover in a later video. Um, and populations we know are the same species that can interbreed. Um, so what we're going to look at then is well, what is the frequency? How do we calculate allele frequencies? Now Darwin didn't look at this when he um, looked at variation. He never looked at populations. So this has allowed us to understand evolution a lot more um, and, and lots of things like that. Now in order to explain it, you need to be able to fully understand um, what mechanism of inheritance is actually happening. So whether that's co-dominance, whether that's linkage, all things you've done in the genetics module before this. Um, and also you need to know obviously how many alleles are actually present. So is it one allele, two alleles, three alleles, four, um, to obviously calculate this. So introducing the Hardy-Weinberg theory then. So the Hardy-Weinberg theory is something that predicts, it's a sorry, principle I should be saying, is a principle that predicts the allele frequency um, in a population and it needs it predicts that the allele frequency will stay constant over generations and therefore you could use it to calculate things like the number of heterozygotes which will come through later on within a population. Now why that's um, important is because in real life this may not always work. So the principle of Hardy-Weinberg is you can only use it if a population is large, if population is randomly mating, so you can do it in a zoo for example, um, if there is no immigration or emigration from the population, if there's no mutation, and if there's no natural selection occurring, because all these things would alter the allele frequency, and that means you couldn't use the Hardy Weinberg. Now, this is quite a tricky process, um, so we'll hopefully break it down for you. But really, the bottom line is you need to practice, practice, practice for this one. So, just to introduce you to the idea of allele frequencies, basically, the alleles are the different versions of a gene. So, let's say you had a gene and you had two different versions of it, and we're going to call them just dominant and recessive, uh, which is dominant you represent with the letter P, and recessive you represent with the letter Q. The total number of alleles must add up to 100% or 1 and a zero for if nobody had it. So therefore, basically, if you've got two alleles, P and Q must equal 100% of the population. So for example, if everyone had um, a dominant uh, gene for, let's say, eye color and a recessive gene, um, or a dominant recessive, those two are the only two in there, and therefore they have to add up to one. So uh, let's continue to look at this then. If we were looking at genotype frequencies, so we're not just looking at individual alleles, we're actually looking at the genotypes they make up, then we have to do a slightly more complicated equation. So just to make you think about this, just think about cystic fibrosis for a second. Cystic fibrosis, if you've got two dominant letter Cs, which would mean that you are normal, you would be homozygous dominant, and that is represented by P squared. Um, if you are heterozygous, which means you're a carrier in this case, you would be uh, 2PQ. And if you're homozygous recessive and you're a sufferer, you would be 2CC, little Cs. Now, often in a population, they're the easiest to see because the sufferers are the easiest to see. It's these two that we have a problem with because obviously if you're homozygous, then you don't show any symptoms for cystic fibrosis. If you're heterozygous, you don't show any symptoms for cystic fibrosis. So if we um, use a sum, we can effectively work out the number of homozygous and heterozygous um, 
individuals by knowing just the homozygous recessive, just the sufferers. So this is the sum here. So you've got P squared, so number of homozygous dominant squared, to plus 2PQ plus Q squared equals 1. So it looks quite complicated. We're going to use that equation shortly. So let's just have a look at this example first of all, so following that idea there. Um, this is an easier example maybe. Uh, if a population of flowers had three genotypes, uh, dominant, dominant R, or homozygous dominant, heterozygous, and homozygous recessive, if the frequency of RR, so two capital R's, is 0.63 in a population, what is the frequency of little r, little r? Now the temptation here would be to just think, okay, well it's going to be 1 take away 0.63, which would leave you with uh, what, 0.37. However, that would be incorrect. And the reason it's incorrect is if we're just looking at um, the frequency of these two, we're not taking into account the frequency of this one here. So what we have to do is work out what is the number of um, the number of uh, the frequency of dom the dominant gene in itself. So what we do is p squared equals 0.63, and we square root that to tell us that p equals 0 0.79. Then we can do p plus q equals 1, and we can work out the frequency of um, recessive alleles is 0 0.21. OK, so let's have a look at an example um, of a more complicated example from an old A-level paper. So if we were to try and calculate with cystic fibrosis the number of carriers, which is the important thing we need to calculate because those are the people that may not know they've got it, but could pass it on to their offspring. So obviously carriers are heterozygous and that's what we're interested therefore in looking at. And those effects with cystic fibrosis are homozygous recessive. So let's say in a population of about 2,000, one person suffers from cystic fibrosis. So one in every 2,000. We want to know how many of the population are carriers. So we've got P, which represents the dominant alleles, which would be people who are homozygous dominant and do not are normal. We've got Q, which represents the recessive allele, which is uh, the people who are sufferers. And if that take that forward, we then therefore have this. So Q squared is the frequency of the genotype CFCF, so the number of people who are sufferers. P squared is number of people who are of genotype dominant dominant, so that is normal. And 2PQ is the frequency of people who are, as long as they're following Hardy one of them and randomly mating, are carriers. So, basically, therefore, where any two individuals of the population mate, it could result in the following offspring. So therefore we can say that we've got P squared plus 2PQ goes to Q squared. So let's have a look then at how we can take these numbers and do it. So we've already said that within a population, we know that P plus Q always adds up to 1 or 100%. And we also know that in a population, the following genotypes always add up to 1 or 100%. We know that Q squared, which remember is the number of um, individuals who are homozygous recessive, i.e. sufferers, is 1 in every 2,000. So 1 divided by 2,000 is 0 0.05. And therefore, Q squared equals 0 0.05, because we've done 1 divided by 2,000. Now, what that tells us is that Q squared is 0 0.005, but we're going to square root that number to work out how what percentage of the um, gene pool is made of the recessive allele. So if we square root 0 0.0005, this gives us a number of 0 0.022, which is the same as 2.2% of the population. So if therefore we know that P plus Q equals 1, we already know now that Q is 0.022. So effectively, 
all we've got to do is 1 minus 0 0.022, which gives us P, which is 0 0.978. We can then do 2PQ, which is the carrier's frequency, if you remember, to work out what the frequency actually is. So 2PQ is effectively just like algebra 2 times p, 2 times p times q so 2 times 0.97 times 0.22 equals 0.043 which is means that it's 4.3 percent or 4.3 people in every 100 are carriers so therefore if we take this forward in our population of 2000 if 4.3 every 100 are carriers, then in 2000, you do 2000 times 4.3 divided by 100 equals 86%. Now, once you've done that, we can then use this to actually work out, does a population follow um, Hardy-Weinberg? And effectively, we can do this because if we look at if we can look at population and allele frequencies at different generations, if they change, then they are no longer following the Hardy-Weinberg principle. And that would mean one of the following things above that we've already mentioned has to be happening to the population. So let's say this this result was different now. Let's say five years later we found out that one in every three thousand three hundred babies are born with cystic fibrosis. This would tell us that Hardy Weinberg's principle isn't being followed in this case because of the change in population. But again, let's just do this one to have a bit of a, a go at it. So if we start off with, we need to know what is happening. So if one in every three thousand three hundred babies are born with cystic fibrosis, that would mean that Q squared, which is the recessive number squared, okay, is one divided by 33,000. That equals 0 0.0003. Q therefore would equal the square root of that, which equals 0 0.017, which would tell us that 1.7% of the population are sufferers. Next one is sorry says that 1.17 percent of the population um, have that gene next one there we know that p plus q equals one and therefore we're going to do one take away 0.17 which is 0.983 which tells us that 98.3 percent of the population have the dominant allele so if we have a look at carrier numbers then and how we work that out well we know what we've just done before so we've got two times PQ is our, our carrier numbers. So therefore we have to do two times 0.98 times 0 0.19, 0 0.017, which equals 0 0.0334, which is 3.3%, which tells us in every 100 people, 3.P are carriers. So that is either 3.3 in every 100 or about 1 in every 30. So I hope that's been useful for you guys. Really quite complicated to explain, but also quite complicated to do. But you need to just practice it and get used to applying those numbers. I hope that's useful. See you again soon.